We humans are the slaves of the Archons, who manipulate and control us. I do not want to discredit the idea of the existence of aliens through this material. Nor do I say that it is impossible for them to constantly visit this corner of the galaxy. I simply believe that people can be manipulated very easily, especially with phenomena they do not control. The elites have understood this very well since ancient times. In modern history, the most controversial topic is aliens. Beings belonging to other planets, or more recently to other planes parallel to ours, have visited us and continue to watch us constantly for some reason. While some camps claim that we are a kind of zoo of these technologically overdeveloped creatures, others believe that they will do us good and want us to reach that spiritual and technological level with theirs. The theories by which we were created have been abundant since the 1960s by providing evidence, some more fantastic than others. The most conclusive theories, inspired by ancient mythologies, along with certain archaeological discoveries ignored by the official community in the field, seem to be sources for several people who have more or less demonstrated the existence of these creatures on our planet in the distant past. Dot. The messages of the ancients though thousands of miles apart, seem to state the same scenario. Local African legends can be compared to Indian myths or Native American tales. All indicate that we were created like the gods, and most of the rules of civic and moral conduct are intertwined. The very religions that emerged from this coexistence with the gods seem to be alike. Although some have branched out but the dogmatic basis has remained the same. The similarities go further and describe that the gods left, or disappeared from the native landscape, but promised a return to force. For over half a century we have been involved in the race to hunt green or grey men. Strangely shaped ships appeared out of nowhere, roaming the entire planet, setting the authorities on fire and instilling fear in the population. At first everyone agreed that these creatures were here to destroy us. Gradually, this fear gradually turned into curiosity, so that later the adoration towards these beings, which later became spiritual, would reach ridiculous heights. Sects that promoted the new religion began to gather thousands of followers, some reaching the order of millions, competing with other religions that had emerged for hundreds of years. To me, this is just an example that the human race has not evolved at all from those who made their bows and fell to the ground whenever lightning made its way through the clouds. The fear of the unknown makes us vulnerable. Another category includes those who saw a way to take advantage of the ignorant mob. As if that wasn't enough. Famous scientists have fallen into the same trap and developed theories that sooner or later turned out to be false. As I said at the beginning, Throughout history there has been an exclusive elite group that has controlled the vast majority of people. Although in the past these groups existed in parallel in different parts of the globe. Along the way they homogenized, or one branch took over the leadership of the others, continuing the plan. What most people do not realize is that we are already living in an undeclared theocracy. Things went quietly, in secret. What the Nazis, with their cult, could not do on the face of it, is now being done secretly. It is a continuation of World War II. People want to hear that. I'm aware of that. In a technological age, stories about gods and fairies reach their goal only in the case of people educated strictly dogmatically or with a low IQ. For this, plans must be developed to scientifically prove the existence of the materials to be implemented. In addition, People are fascinated by a possible meeting with aliens. Any diffused light from the sky becomes, in the eyes of some, the subject of conspiracies and stories of mysterious UFOs and aliens invading our planet. Aliens have always been a successful commercial recipe. It is important to understand that there is an enormous and sophisticated disinformation campaign around the whole extraterrestrial issue. At least 90% of the images and information provided to the public are selected to evoke fear followed by hatred of everything extraterrestrial. Movies, TV shows, and books on the subject demonstrate this view, if one were to take into account all this rubbish. 
One might think that in America a second person was abducted from his house in the middle of the night and tortured. It's just not true. Fear and horror sell best. The Zionists benefit from a terrified and misinformed population. We know that there are clandestine paramilitary operations, controlled by a shadow group, that stage false UFO events. Throughout history, conspiracy theorists have discovered several projects that followed, or are following, a change of collective mindset to achieve certain goals. The Blue Beam Project is a conspiracy theory proposed by Serge Monist who claims that NASA and the United Nations are trying to implement the New Age religion on a global scale through a 3D technological simulation of the second coming of Jesus Christ. These accusations appeared in a 1994 audio presentation later published in his book The Blue Beam Project, NASA. Proponents of her case have been working to make the actual transcript of this statement available online. Since 1994, he has said in an interview that he has been repeatedly threatened by the Canadian Prime Minister and the Vatican. Under the pretext that he is not allowed to educate his children at home. The authorities arrested him and kidnapped his family. Returning home, Serge Monist, who had never suffered from heart problems, had a heart attack that left him dead. Blue Beam is a NASA project that involves four directions for the implementation of the New World Religion New Age. This religion is the very basis of the New World Government. Because without bringing humanity into this spiritual slavery, the dictatorship of the New World Order would not be possible, said Serge Monist in his book. The first step in this project is to discredit or reevaluate all religious knowledge so far by creating artificial earthquakes in precise locations on the planet, where important secrets have always been supposed to be hidden. The aim will be to bring to light some so-called new archaeological discoveries that will prove that the doctrines of the great religions are false. The second step of the NASA project involves organizing a giant holographic spectacle projected right into the sky so that it is visible on the entire planet, which will simulate the coming of the Messiah by emitting waves that act directly on the brain. Each man will see in this hologram the savior specific to his religion and will hear him speak in his own language. The third direction of development of the Blue Beam project is to target telepathic and electromagnetic communication through low, very low and extremely low frequency waves that will make people think they hear their own God speaking to them. Such computer-generated waves will be transmitted via satellites and interact with natural thinking, giving rise to what is called artificial speech. The fourth dimension of the Blue Beam project includes total control of the planet. This will simulate an alien invasion of the world's major cities. It is said that countries that have nuclear weapons will use it to protect themselves from this danger, and then become totally vulnerable to the real attack which will be carried out later by the shadow government. The UMO project is the best example of mass manipulation in the field of UFOs. Jose Luis Jordan Peña was a psychiatrist of Spanish origin who developed a theory according to which about 79% of people belonging to any social bed can be manipulated on a large scale precisely because of the paranoid phenomenon that is in our subconscious. The scientific community did not agree with his theory. So man went on to demonstrate his views. Peña began his plan for the UMMO report by spreading an untrue rumor about the crash of a UFO in a notorious area of the capital Madrid. In order to give authenticity to his words and create confusion and panic among the population, he also came up with tangible evidence. Monsters made of a common plastic material used in NASA's space programs and which was completely unknown in Spain. Moreover, Peña stated that he found the piece of extraterrestrial object himself at the crash site and that it has a non-existent chemical composition on Earth, so it is of extraterrestrial origin. With the path paved ahead, the psychiatrist continues his plan and reveals the identity of the visiting alien race, humiliated, descendants from the distant planet UMMO. The report also provides correspondence that would have taken place between the Spanish psychiatrist and aliens from another world. The letters are part of the UMMO file, being written even by the psychiatrist who had shown during this farce a special writing talent. 
The aliens talked about their society, customs, organization, and beliefs at home. Each epistle was anonymous, strangely handwritten, and it seems that Peña sent him, probably after receiving them from aliens, to reputable scientists, philosophers, journalists, and researchers. In addition, he was part of a pro-alien association that frequently met in cafes in Madrid where he discussed and issued hypotheses about extraterrestrial civilizations. The story takes a completely dramatic turn at this point, as following the letters received, Sesma begins to send his own messages in which he says that he was contacted by phone by hummingbirds. Who told him that it is the aliens will to make themselves known to Earth? In addition, he says he has received news about the incredible differences between humans and Earthlings. As well as similarities regarding historical periods of conflict, although the story showed from a post office that it was sewn with white thread. Those who were eager to believe in aliens took advantage of everything that was brought to them on the tray. The UMMO report says that Sesma continues to tell what the hummingbirds told her. Reaching their history, a tyrannical one in which two humiliated females destroyed the whole civilization, plunging it into terror and genocide. Nuclear power plants. Databases and libraries had all been destroyed until a messiah sprang up and preached existence, surprise or not, of one righteous God. So even the green men with antennae would have had their own religious reformer who saved their own world. At this point, the hysteria had already reached France and Italy, where all the details of what was happening to the aliens were published. Thousands of people from different cultures with different educational backgrounds looked greedily and sipped at any information about anonymous aliens invented by a Spanish psychiatrist who no longer knew how to wash his hands of the hysteria he had caused. The UMMO report has raised big questions among scientists about the reaction of public opinion to real contact with otherworldly beings. If on a collective scale people reacted in this way, who knows how they will react on an individual level. The elites have learned something from this, and yet they hope that in the future, in the event of contact with aliens, people will react much more calmly. War of the Worlds, perhaps the best-known forerunner of UFO hysteria is American actor, director, producer and screenwriter Orson Welles. One day before Halloween, on October 30, 1938, one of the most interesting radio broadcasts in history took place. The CBS radio network aired a radio version of H.G. Wells's science fiction novel War of the World. Starring Orson Welles, the authenticity of the transmission was achieved through numerous techniques used by the creators in order to capture as much public attention as possible. CBS had announced at the beginning of the radio show that what was to come was just a radio play, but many listeners lost the first few seconds of the show. At one point, she was disturbed by breaking news about a Martian invasion. They even wrapped their heads in wet towels as protection against the poisonous Martian gas. Which shows that this experiment was a planned one to interpret the perception of simple people and their behavior in extreme cases. The phenomenon produced by mass psychosis was called it is a contagion and consists in the rapid transmission of emotions and manifestations to groups of individuals. Since panic and confusion have set in in the crowds, the individual reacts by adapting to the reactions of others. A radio show that adapted the War of the Worlds to sound like a news broadcast announcing an alien invasion, the New Jersey population was brought to a state of panic. The above examples do not represent the big picture and do not show that these extraterrestrial beings do not exist, but only the ability of the elites to use this subject in their own interest. Lately we are witnessing an aggression on the part of these entities who, instead of landing in certain places on the globe, according to the logic of many, prefer to hide in different parts of the world. Even the students are prepared, more recently, how to react in the case of a third grade meeting how to investigate the case themselves and how to urgently report to the authorities what is happening. Such demonstrations have been taking place regularly since last year, only their growing number proving to be a very serious situation. The number of phenomena involving UFOs has increased significantly in the UK in the last two years, with similar situations occurring in China, the USA or Russia. 
Secret intelligence agencies around the world have declassified several hundred reports confirming the existence, or contact in various forms, with races outside outer space. Why is more and more documentation being made about alien invasions? We are ready. We are driven to believe what was already obvious. Over 77% of Americans believe that there is evidence of the existence of aliens and their visits to our planet. Contrary to conventional wisdom and logic, humans like to believe in strange things and tend to seek and interpret evidence in favor of extraterrestrials. There is a small group of people running secret programs about UFOs. In terms of full knowledge of things and operational authority, that is, executive authority, it has nothing to do with the President of the United States or Congress. With the help of the arsenal of electromagnetic and psycho-operational weapons and the construction of alien ships based on captured original models. The shadow government has been involved in fake kidnapping scenarios and is likely to launch a fake alien attack.